Welcome to another episode of Sports and Songs Podcast. We're on season five, episode 23. We're your hosts, Andy and Dan. Andy, how are you? Doing good. How about you? Good. It's episode 23 of the fifth season. It's a songs episode tonight, which is a songs edition we do every Thursday. Albums, Albums. music, tours, concerts, musicians. Today is yes. April 11th, 2024. We got a good uh, good special feature tonight, Andy. Yeah, has put together. This month we're doing something different. We're not doing albums. We're doing artists. So we found out through five plus seasons, we'll be doing album go. Oh, did you know he did this other album? You know he was in that band. So we're just kind of this month going to focus on artists for, for this month. Random artists. Random but good. Very good artists. <clears throat> we we kind of sold out to the man for the – for the clickbait, we kind of picked guys with birthdays this week and went from that route. That was the pattern. Let's notice that. And tonight is Mr. Warren Demartini of Rat. All right, here I'll bring it up here. Let's uh, let's show an image or two here. Right. He, yes, he had the rock star look going. He was very good. Born April tenth, nineteen sixty three. He's a touch older than we are. Uh, he was known as the lead guitarist for the glam metal band Rat. Well, no, Rat was never glam. I know you agree with me, or were they? Yeah, I, they weren't glam, but you know what? This picture, they didn't wear the leather like Judas Priest and Scorpions and everything else. So it's kind of, if you weren't that, you were glam. Okay. My opinion, that's kind of the way they went with it. There wasn't just metal. You had to do one of the other. Yeah, yeah. They were good. We were big fans of Rat, so this right. would be interesting. Very, very good. Uh, he was, like I said, born in Chicago, Illinois, the youngest of five boys. He spent his early years in the suburbs of River Forest, Illinois. The family later relocated to San Diego. Demartini became interested in classic uh, in rock music due to the influence of his older brothers, Bernard and James, whose bands released their rehearsed in their family basement. Here's the fact of the day, Dan. Okay. Write this down. I'm getting Warren, my pencil right now. His grandmother was also a musician. Okay. She played piano piano accompaniment to silent movies in Preston, Minnesota. Well, I, I did not know that. He, he's basically one of us. Warren D. Martini's grandmother is a Minnesotan. Played piano to the silent movies in Preston, Minnesota. Just add a show there because you can't top that. That's love it. It's just end nice the show. You know, a small world once again. That m many of these musicians and many are and have been uh, connected to Minnesota or through Minnesota or played in Minnesota or uh, recorded in Minnesota. Minnesota big influence. So it's kind of doing the math on that. I said Warren was born in '63, so his grandma who played this out. You'd have to ask Coach Mike about that if he knew her. He may have. He might. Maybe, maybe you know. It's, she was in the class behind him or something. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. mother, his mother bought him a guitar at his request when he was around seven or eight years old, according to Warren. He struggled early and learning to play it due to the tuning pegs being cheap, causing the instrument to constantly fail, fall out of tune. As a result, he became frustrated and smashed the instrument as he had seen Pete Townsend of the Who do on stage. Perfect. As a result of the last, as a result, that was the last guitar he would receive as a gift. At age fourteen, he got himself a job and earned to raise some money and purchased a new electric guitar, a Les Paul. Uh, the wow. first song he learned was "Sunshine of Your Love" by Cream, and he learned that by ear. See that right there is when you start going over that crossing that line to being a real yeah. musician. He learned a cream song, so he learned, you know, Clapton by ear. <laughs> you know, that, okay. Warren played his first concert with his band, Plague, in front of a small crowd in San Diego uh, High School at the age of 15. By the time he was emerged as one of San Diego area's best talented, sought after young guitarists. First year after he signed up, he won Best New Guitar Player in San Diego at Guitar Trader. Um, he graduated from high school in 81. He began taking classes at a local college, but in the first semester was invited to Los Angeles to join Mickey Rat. And Mickey okay. Rat was the name of Rat before they became Rat. They were Mickey That's Rat. Right. 
Instead of Mickey Mouse, Mickey Rat. Yeah, Mickey Rat. Um, the band that would eventually become Rat. Yeah, we just covered that. I got to really read ahead better next time. Um, here's And here's the other things. He replaced Jake E. Lee, who went on to play in Ozzy's band in 82. So uh, when he moved San, from San Diego to join Rat, he lived with Jake E. Lee to learn his parts. Oh, so, my gosh. Well, that's I'm going to replace little... you. I have nowhere to live. Teach me your job. Teach me. And t talk about one of the best, Jake E. Lee. My yeah. gosh. So, yeah, this guy's just got talent just oozing all out of him. Um, he became uh, most recognizable aspects. He would co-write several of the band's best-known songs, including Round and Round, Lay It Down, Dance, and Way Cool Jr. Way okay. Cool Jr.'s favorite rat song. Oh, yes. I love that song. Um, Rat would ultimately, ultimately become one of the top selling and most popular metal acts of the decade, uh, ensuring four consecutive platinum albums and one EP in the 80s before disbanding in February of 92. After Rat broke up, D. Martini had a short stint with the band Dokken before br briefly becoming a touring guitarist for the hard rock band White Snake in 1994. Wow. Yeah, he just kind of played with these random guys, you know. I mean, just a you know, White Snake was at its height, right? In those days, yeah, just um, uh, in '95, he released his debut solo song, Surfs Up, as an EP featuring remixes from the title track, followed by his only full length studio album, Crazy Enough to Sing to You, in '96. Rat he reunited in '96 and released two albums, Collage. In July of 87, which or 97, and collage was basically a lot of their B-side stuff, a lot of Mickey Rat stuff they re-recorded. Some demos and things, okay. Yeah, so other stuff to kind of get you back familiar with Rat without releasing. Hey, we're back together. Here's the greatest hits. It was a here's our old crap that no one remembers. We we touched it up and cleaned it up. Okay. And then in 99, they did another self-titled album called Rat, um, which had curricular critical and commercial failure. That album was not very really good. In 2003, he was hired to replace guitarist in a band called Dio. Wow. <laughs> He's just, you know, kind of like Rudy Sarzo, the bass player, who was in Quiet Riot and White Snake and Ozzy. You know, they were with everyone. These jobs fall into their laps. That is yeah. great to, to be with the Dio group. Yeah. Uh, Rat reformed again in 2007. And began a summer tour of the year, March of 2018. It was widely rumor, rumored that he had lost interest in continuing forward with Rat due to ongoing problems with the band. July of 18, Rat stated that Martini would no longer be involved with the current touring lineup as he didn't want to go out there anymore. Um, fair enough, fair enough. VH1. At one time, it labeled him as one of the 10 most underrated hair metal guitarists of the 80s. Now, um, what's your thoughts on that? I, I agree because his name doesn't come up when you think of top five, top ten ever, but you hear him and you're like, oh, yeah, I got to have, I got to add him. You know, Dan, I didn't get Trailer Park Reporter of the Year for nothing. When it said Van or VH1's top ten most underrated guitarist, yep. I have that list of ten guys right here. You know, it makes sense. Uh, he's very That's talented you guy, but here. you never think of him in any kind of list. So here is that list that VH1 had in the 80s of the 10 most underrated hair metal guitarists. Right. Uh, Akari Tausasaki from Loudness, which I've mentioned Loudness before. Jiki Lee from Ozzy Osbourne's band. Rev Beach from Winger. Vito Barda from White Lion, which is very, very, very good guitarist. Tracy Guns from LA Guns. We've yes. seen him. Agree, agree. Warren D. Martini from Rat. George Lynch from Dokken. Mm -hmm. Carlos Cavazzo from Quiet Riot. Vinnie Vincent from Kiss and the Vinnie Vincent Invasion. And CC DeVille from Poison. Okay. Now, the thing that's tough for me to say, oh, so and so should be on that top 10 list. Well, I don't know. These are top 10 underrated. Well, maybe yeah. that guy was underrated or better. So I don't know who to. That's a, good, that's a good list. These are good quality guys. And, yeah. And the list is accurate because they are underrated. Jakey Lee underrated, but you figure he was in the shadow of Randy Rhodes. So you kind of get lost in the shuffle, you know? 
Mm -hmm. But back to our boy, Mr. Warren Martini here. He sometimes uses finger vibrato similar to that style of George Lynch. Alan Holdsworth often used the same technique. And Alan Holdsworth is a very, very good old jazz blues guitarist from England. Okay. Um, I don't know him. Um, and it's a technique usually where when you do your fingers, your whole arm is moving at the same time too. So when his arm was moving, it wasn't just a show thing. It was a, no, I have to do that to do the thing with the chords. So. Um, it, uh, which achieves a periodic rising and lowering of the note by moving and fretting finger longitude, longitude back and forth along the string. And it just goes on to how it works here. But if he did the same type of stuff as George Lynch, well, of course, you were able to replace George Lynch in Dokken. That made it pretty easy on that pick. Mm -hmm. um, here's, here is his discography of the discs that um, Mr. Demartini's been on. A Rat EP in 1983, uh, then Out of the Cellar in 84, Invasion of Your Privacy 85, uh, which I think is probably their better best album. Yep. Uh, Dancing Undercover in 86, Reach for the Sky in 88, uh, Detonator in 90, Rat and Roll, which was the greatest hits in 91. There was a Collage Rat and Infestation in 2010. Um, he did his solo one, Crazy Enough to Sing with You in 96. And then uh, he did a uh, L.A. Blues Authority Volume Two, Glenn Hughes Blues in '91. So there you have it, Warren D. Martini. Um, you know, Robin from Rat, the other guitarist, he kind of gets all the credit and fame a lot of times because he dated Tiny Katane and he was the uh, did all the interviews with Stephen Piercy and everything else. Warren just, I think, I see a lot of similarities with him and George Lynch on the fact that I'm just here to play guitar, man. I ain't here to do the interviews. Mm -hmm. I need to be on TV. Just when do we hit the stage? Where's the girls? Where's the alcohol? Where's the drugs? Kind of and so he's a, a a true yeah a true rock and roll guy, true musician. Was not out for the fame and glory. Was not out with the. Uh, you know, I couldn't even have picked out until I saw these photos here of what guitar he even used. You know, it wasn't yeah. one of those things. I didn't even know. Yeah. And, very, being, very. And, and you and I were, you know, I've always been Rat fans, but we're yes. both all Stephen Piercy fans as well. And so that's why, yes. um, you know, that's it, it kind of Martini gets lost in the shuffle, but he's been busy and active as a musician all these years with some very big names. Uh, imagine the book that that guy could write. Has he hit? Has he written a book? Uh, no, it didn't say on here if he had or not. Um, I think kind of after that last album in 2010, he's just kind of. Stays back and does his thing. Um, yeah, imagine the stories that this guy could tell being with, uh, you know, White Snake, uh, Dio, uh, Dawkins. Yeah. Right. Sitting with Jakey Lee and jamming and learning from him. Oh. I don't know if he took his grandma's old job playing piano up in Preston or not at the silent movies. Well, we need to find out more. We need to explore that because the road that's trip great. And a pianist at the silent movies, a great resume job for the grandmother. Yes. You know, maybe he name dropped her to get the, his gigs with Rat. Yeah. My grandma plays in silent movies. So he graduated high school in eighty one. So you know that makes you know this guy. He was one of these guys that came into it right as the you know MTV was taking off uh, the music, the rock and yeah, roll. Yeah, he had perfect in eighty one coming out. Yes, perfect. And he's the youngest of five boys. Did he? Did he say? Yeah, and the other two had a band in high school too. So the, the music was in the family. You know, grandma played the piano. I'm sure mom and dad had something to do with music if they weren't just yeah. fans of it. They understood it. You got three boys who play guitar. So it wasn't, this is the youngest, probably got picked on for many years growing up, being the youngest. Uh, and now he's the famous guy with uh, all this background. Very interesting stuff. Who's laughing now, boys? Yeah, who's laughing now? But Warren Martini, always uh, a good, very good, talented guitar um, but prodigy in high school, so he, you know, they saw the talent at a young age, and he lived up to it. In my book. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm sure just a naturally gifted guy. Yeah. Uh, anything more on uh, Mr. D. Martini? No, just go back and re-listen to Rat again, especially Way Cool Junior. Because I, I just yeah, that's one of my favorite. Mark, that song, you know, that first, that first yep. EP also I like in the Dancing on a Cover, mm -hmm. uh, Invasion yep. of Privacy. Out of the they were song, all really good. Detonated. And, the sad thing is, for me is 
as much as I love Rat and I listen to him, okay, we'll say, okay, round and round with the exception of that song. If I hear one, I can't really tell you what album it's off of. Because they all just kind of popped out, boom, boom, boom. Correct. Yeah, I can't. Kiss. It's not like Kiss. Hey, I know this song off this album and this track yeah, off this. I had two thirds on it. I'd have a hard time knowing which one came off where, but Way Cool Junior was uh, very good and round and round under the, uh, out of the cellar. Reach for the Sky. Reach they were just the all so good. It just, it, it, I didn't pick albums because it. I don't want to say they all sounded the same because they all had a little bit of difference, but they were all similar enough where you couldn't say, no, they had more harmonica and keyboard on this album. It's from that album. No, it's not like, yeah, this album was all more bluesy. You know, uh, they didn't go the Cinderella for uh, the, the, the direction, but good stuff. I always liked Rat. So, Andy, I've got some slides here. Yes, fire away. I got some slides. Wicked Garden. We've never seen these guys, uh, Midwest leaders in what they call here 90s alternative rock. Now they're playing at Pounders Friday, tomorrow night uh, on 50-50 to go see these guys. I want to see them eventually. There's a lot of the 90s alternative grunge bands coming out. We've seen probably the better ones already with, with Mad Alice, but I think that these guys would put on uh, a heck of a show. If I go to see it, I'll let everyone uh, certainly know how it was. You'll be the ones in the ha- you'll be the one in the ham shirt if you're there, right? Ham's shirt. <clears throat> now it's at Pounders, but keep in mind they're still indoors until the outside amphitheater uh, opens up in the summertime. So this will be indoors. I, I still want to see that amphitheater outside that they have there yeah. alone. Now Foreigner just recorded yes. a new live album. It's going to be amazing. What's your thoughts here on this comment? You know, I like Foreigner. Um, I've been in touch with a couple uh, tribute band that does Foreigner. I'd like to get them on because of Foreigner going into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, of course. I always did like Foreigner. Um, you don't hear that music anymore. They're, Foreigner was one of those bands like a Night Ranger. You don't hear good rock and roll bands anymore. Yep. And you know, more, you know, uh, what you could call softer rock. Still rock, yep. Yep. but softer. And boy. But Jukebox Hero is a great song. It's one of the other stuff. Really good stuff. But what um, about a live, you know, recording a live album that's very interesting for a band this uh, old, I, I could say. Experience. Well, experience, experience, I'll say. But is that something they need to do, or is that something because it hasn't been done? Is that something? What I think what, has, yeah, it has what, to do with the Hall of Fame induction, I think. They want to put something out there. Let's, put up, let's not throw together our greatest hits in the studio. Let's do it as a live one because if you do the greatest hits, a lot of that is with Lou Graham on vocals. Now okay. you got to we could just record this one and not pay as much because we just got to give them writing credits, not recording credits. So we'll see how now that turns. Has Warner ever released a box a box set? I don't believe so. That'd be interesting. Okay, here, check this out. What's your thoughts on Mr. CJ Snare? Um, you know, I I think everybody was a Closet Fires fan back in the day. Um, not a lot of people admit it. They were kind of you know. Whatever. They were too pretty for yeah. the guys to like. But you like to be the really kind of fringe. It. Yes. Um, they were just here, like I said, we said in the pre-production show a couple months ago, I think, at, at uh, Medina. They've been touring a lot with Lita and with Doc and some other people. Um, CJ is passing out of nowhere. I have heard people saying not only it was a shock, but the last few shows I'd seen of them, he was still hitting the high notes. He was a great performer still. I think the, the, the music industry, the music world was just a shock for a couple days. It's like, wow. <clears throat> um, he will be missed. I don't know what Firehouse is going to do to replace him to go on. If they just canceled those dates now, if they're going to go on, what's going to happen? I haven't looked, but I'm pretty sure uh, their album sales and Spotify hits have gone up a lot the last week. That's just nature of the beast when that happens. But yeah, very underrated talent. I, I enjoyed their music. I'd still pop some of their stuff on Spotify every now and then to listen to. Um, I've always wanted to go see them. Always, oh, next time, next time. There won't be a next time. So next time, folks, go see the band. Don't put it off. You never know. Yeah. And we've said this before uh, on some of these bands that tour on the on the you know the Treasure Island circuit, uh, the older bands see them, and, and it's for this reason. Yeah, um, that and 
a guy he drops may, dead, you may not get a chance to see them yeah. ever again. And he can still hit the tones now, but maybe he won't next year. You know, like when we saw Tom Kiefer. I don't know if I want to see him again now. I mean, he was you can see he was getting tired during the show. I want to see that last show be a good one. I don't want to yeah. see him in a year or two and have him lose a step, you know. Uh, very good stuff. And uh, then I got a couple more here. All right. Check this out. Now you're going I, to this. Yes. Me talk and the bride. A, talk, a, talk a little bit about it. Me and the bride are going to go. Um, Turtles is her old, old stomping grounds from back in the day. Um, very excited to go there. I haven't seen, you know, they've redone a lot of stuff there for shows, obviously. We've had three members of the band on already working on number four. Um, they are a good show. They put it on a great show, and they're just fun guys to be around. I, if you have not seen them, and you just kind of like Guns N' Roses, you need to go see these guys. The energy they put into it, they got the, the bits down, the, the songs, the personalities, they got it all. Um, good time ahead. Turtles, Shockby is a great place to go. Um, just be careful on the way out there. I've noticed since I don't go out there that often anymore. A lot of the roads are redone. A lot of the roads are dark, so just watch where you're going. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a good show, and like you said the last time, is if you got to if you're not paying attention to the lead singer, you know there's some costume changes going on during the show. Uh, they're all very much in costume and in character is the main thing. Yep. Slash yep. looks like Slash playing. Yeah, it's the Mike Schmidt. I mean, it's good stuff. And of course, brought to you by Greenbelt Northeast. Northeast. That's the Northeast, and we got one more. Oh, no. I no, we don't. We it, you know, there we go. That was the four. Yep, that's all of them. That's that all. Okay. <clears throat> so that's what I've got for news and updates and concerts and uh, update releases and stuff. Now, the I have not I have checked not. the Sunflower Fox and the Chicken Leg, how they're doing in the awards. Uh, it's a voting that's still going on, I think. I've not seen an updated list, No. Um, I would say if Katie doesn't win, there's something wrong. It's fixed. And it's nationwide, too. It's not just a local thing. So they're up with the yeah. local uh, artist of the year. I mean, nationwide artist of the year, song of the year, uh, female vocalist of the year, uh, new group, new band, uh, yep. music video. All these awards they're up for. Uh, uh, some now you can nominate. Their, uh, you can go on their line and vote. I, I'm just saying, though, I never heard them getting any of this before they were on our show. Did you? No. It almost soon after that is very around that oh, same exact time. They kind of took off. They, yeah, they uh, really, really took off after we uh, interviewed. But they've got. Well, I was looking at you know the other day on their page. The sto the studio, the photo sheet that they do. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites. One of my favorites. That band has got some. You feel like you're back in a nineteen seventies. Al yeah. Album. Uh, they have cool yeah. photo shoots. The way they dress, what they wear. They have some fun. They have some uh, gimmicky kind of things, but uh, mm -hmm. it's a it's a fun group. Uh, that they, and their songs are once again they're kind of lost seventies rock rock music songs. Yep. That they're kind of they're they're fitting in because no one no one does that uh, and no one's good at it. If they do do it, but these guys have a good feel for it. They're a good niche. Yep. That's all I've got for the show. Um, let us know on the comments section if you have any other requests or ideas or uh, things that we could cover. We're always looking for more ideas on that. Anything else, Andy? That's all I got. I said just leave your suggestions down below. Please like, share, subscribe, and all that happy stuff. All right. Have a good week, everyone. Bye.